previously on Tiny Home Tours Truck Builds. We've made a ton of progress in such a short period of time. Kevin really knocked it out in bringing these blueprints to life. The studs are hidden, walls are up, ceilings up, cabinets are in, and our gorgeous Norcold fridge is in. And the flooring is finished, and this minimalistic, modern, rustic design has really come together. Today on Tiny Home Tours Truck Build, we're tackling a beast of a power system by Signature Solar, getting the plumbing up and running, and sharing our easy install shower setup. You know that cabinet that had to be exact dimension to house and fit so many things perfectly? The desk couch area cabinet? Well, that cabinet is going to house our electrical system. Right underneath the desk is going to be the batteries and inverter, and against the wall is going to be the rest of the electrical components. We like to stay off grid as long as possible, so we wanted a robust electrical system that would allow us to have some of the luxuries that we're used to before, but also enough power to be able to work remotely. We're so thrilled to be working with Signature Solar and they've set us up with a very powerful electrical system. Starting off with their EG4 batteries, they are a servo rack battery, which we haven't really looked into that type before, but we were really impressed with how many amp hours you get in such a small footprint. It's such a breeze to pair multiple batteries together, not only because of their size, but where the connections are. We're pairing two of them together for a total of 800 amp hours of lithium batteries. We're hooking up these batteries in parallel and also pairing them with some Victron components. We've got a 3000 watt inverter going in, a couple Lynx distributors, We've got a MPPT controller for our signature solar grape solar panels that are on the roof. We're able to fit five 200 watt solar panels on there for a total of 1000 watts of solar. Now that is a beast of a system. You can find all those components on Signature Solar's website, which is linked below. This is almost the final configuration of your electrical system, but this inverter charger is going to be standing up once the cabinet slides in here. But for the sake of video, the cabinet is not installed because it'll be difficult to see a lot of this stuff. So you've got two batteries here. These are EG4 LLs from Signature Solar. These guys are connected through these shunts to your Lynx distributors. It's all of your charging side things like your solar panels, your alternator, and your shore power inlet. This one is all of your loads. So you've got AC on its own circuit here and then your DC distribution fuse block there. Your AC system is powered through this Quattro 2 inverter. This is the main shutoff for your solar panels. Two leads from your solar panels come in here to this switch and enters your solar charge controller going into the Lynx distributor to charge your batteries. This also communicates with your Servo GX. You can get all sorts of fun information from this display. Okie doke, I think that was it. For Shore Power, we've added a 30 amp RV outlet. Corey sent us their 50 foot extension cord and surge protector. And I'll tell you, in the past, we've used a 25 foot and having that extra feet is gonna make a difference because there were numerous times we were just a little too short. With the system we have, I don't foresee us hooking up too often to shore power, but I'm really glad to have these as a backup, definitely during those winter months and cloudy weeks. Rob has finished up the main components of the electrical system. He's gonna head back out of state to his wife and new house. We're going to now start to run all of our wires. Yes, now that the cabinets are already built, that is actually when we are starting to run our wires. And the reason being, once you start driving your rig, it's like putting your home through an earthquake and things can shift and change. Also, if you ever need to do maintenance on wires, we have access to those. So we're running all of these wires from the corner of the couch area here to the back dresser area. We're going right under the stairs, through the garage, 
and through the back cabinet of the kitchen. We have a few different areas for outlets of where we're gonna be putting them in. We have a spot right by the desk area for a 120 and a USB outlet. We have in the back dresser area, same ones. And then also over by the kitchen in the mini cabinet, we have a 120 and a USB as well. We have one additional 120 volt outlet in the microwave cabinet that is hidden. To tap it all off, we've added a second alternator that is 270 amps, so that'll charge our batteries while we are driving as well. With a system like this paired with signature solars, batteries, and solar panels, I'm confident it's gonna give us more than enough power to go back and visit some of those places that we really love, like Washington and the rainforest, and allow us to continue living full-time off-grid. Against odds, we much prefer water jugs over a water tank. Having water jugs, we've been really able to get water from anywhere and everywhere needed during our travels. In the past three years of our full-time traveling, we actually only had to pay for water once because we weren't able to get it. The reason we went with a water tank and not the jugs is because of our shower system. We didn't want to run out of water mid-shower and have to change the jugs out. So it's gonna be interesting to see how traveling with a water tank compared to the jugs will be. of our water system is we have a 42 gallon fresh water tank we've got a sea flow 3.0 grounds per minute water pump paired with a sea flow water accumulator we also have a water drop water filter to filter the whole entire system for our grade tank we're going with two different options we have one that will go straight outside and then we have a quick release hose connection that can go down to a gray tank water jug that is right underneath our sink and again that is right where the cargo door is where you can access and empty that in order to fill our water tank, we put a RV water inlet right inside that cargo door for an easy fill. We're putting a water filter on the whole entire system for two reasons. One, you never know what type of water sources you get water from at times. And the other reason is it'll filter everything that goes through the shower and also everything that goes through the faucet. Since it is filtered, it will keep the water cleaner. So it will also keep our shower valve and our faucet clean as well. We're going with a hydronic system for our water heater and also our heating system. This is our first time using this, but Rob recommended it, so we decided to go with it. It has a furnace under the hood in the engine bay. It has two lines to run coolant all the way over to underneath the sink where our plumbing system is. That is where the water heater portion is and also the blower for hot air to warm up our rig. It is a very energy efficient system, so it only pulls a tiny bit of power and then it also sips a little bit of gas from our main tank. So you can hear your furnace is running. It kind of sounds like a jet engine taking off. Your furnace is taking fuel out of your gas tank. Right here is a little water pump that circulates the coolant through the system. So this is hot coolant coming out. It drops down to the frame, follows the frame all the way back, and then I can show you where it deviates. The hoses are on the other side of the frame rail there, but they come back and here they jump across and then they come up into your floor here. So again, the, the larger hose is the hot coolant coming in, and it comes up here into the reservoir. Hot coolant comes into this plate heat exchanger here, and this heats up your domestic water. It would get heated up on demand as it passes through this heat exchanger, and it would come out the other side hot and go up to your sink. This heat exchanger heats up air rather than water. That's pretty much the whole heating system. Today we're getting the Rivati 16 by 20 sink installed. We didn't go with too big of sink and you have to be very particular on your sink size because if you go too big, then you have no room to cook. If you go too small, then you can't clean your pans that are in there. We also didn't want to go too big just to try to keep the sink as clean as possible with using as little water as possible. So we went with the Ruvati sink. It is an epi granite sink, a really nice matte black one. This sink did come with a drain as well, so that was a nice little added bonus. Installation was pretty straightforward and easy. Just added a little plumber's putty right around the drain, installed it, and no leaks the first time. 
should you go with a shower or should you not? That is a huge debate. And if we were building a rig any smaller than this, we would not be going with the shower. Our box is 14 foot by seven foot. And this is the smallest size we would go for a dedicated shower area. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So Kevin is putting up some walls for our shower and is right in the center of the build. But with this box being so wide, it doesn't enclose the space at all. It actually sort of divides it up more as like the living area and then the bathroom bedroom area. We like to keep things as simple as possible and we're applying that to the shower as well. Instead of doing tiles, mortar, and grout, we are doing a red guard membrane with a vinyl sheet flooring. Got our last coat of red guard on here last night. It's all dry, so today we're gonna put on our vinyl sheet flooring. We used it in our van, worked really well, add some style to it. We measured out and cut pieces of the vinyl flooring to fit each individual wall and piece. We then used a perfect put down, which is a vinyl adhesive to adhere the vinyl to the wall. And thereafter, we put some caulking right around the corners to waterproof those as well. We went with a black and white looking sort of elegant bathroom style. The white maybe is not the exact perfect look we were going for, but it's the perfect one we could find for what is available. We really like how the black is coming together on the back wall along with installing our matte black shower head and valve. One of the controversial topics in the nomad world is whether you need a toilet or not. For full-time living, we're definitely in the camp of you need a toilet. We're able to partner with Elgo for this build. They ended up sending us their origin toilet. We've used other composting toilets in the past and there's always been something a little off with them, whether it's their construction, engineering a little bit weird, or the spokes not reaching down enough to actually churn the composting material. The Elgo toilet that we received is definitely a step above that. It has an electric churner, so we're gonna hook that up to our 12 volt system. And then we also got a waterproof cover that goes over it. So that way we won't have to remove the toilet when we're using the shower. For a little more simplified system, they do have the Nomad, which is basically a composting toilet with a urine diverting and a bag system. Everything in the bathroom came together very nicely. We were able to save some money using the vinyl sheet flooring, and it just turned out very elegant. We're utilizing Kevin's carpentry skills to build this one of my favorite parts of the build, a custom bathroom door. I had an idea of what I wanted the door to look like and I ended up showing Kevin a picture of a door we had seen in our travels in the Northeast. Not really thinking he'd be able to do it, but he said right away, oh yeah, I can do that. He built it with some pine board and with the added stain Kevin's skill and the accessories, it turned out absolutely beautiful. One of those drop dead gorgeous features when you walk into our new home. Ooh, that was a lot of numbers and specs. Utilities, plumbing systems, electrical systems can be very confusing. So we're really glad that Signature Solar was able to help us along the way. And also Rob and his knowledge in hydronic water systems as well. Next time on Tiny Home Tours Truck Build, we're gonna be working on that final punch list we're gonna be putting up that feature wall, loading up the motorcycles and wrapping up this build.